Hello everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Jeanine Nkosi, and that is a picture of me right there. I wanted to put a picture up so that way y'all could see the person or put a face uh, with the person who is talking on the other side of this microphone. Uh, a little bit later in the semester, we're going to do some stuff with a tool called Flipgrid, and I'll do some um, screencasts like this and do the dual uh, screencast with the little webcam in the corner, but uh, for purposes of this one, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. And I wanted to just give you a quick um, kind of overview of our Canvas class and what you can expect in module number one as you get started in Sociology 1S, Principles of Sociology. So to access our Canvas site, uh, one way that you can enter our portal is through the Fresno State homepage. So if you just get yourself to the Fresno State homepage and then go over here to Quick Links, under Quick Links, you can click on this tab right here to access Canvas. So if you click on Canvas, then right there, log in and you can get more information if you want um, like how to do an orientation or information uh, about how to uh, use different tools and stuff in Canvas, you can click on students here. But just to log in, just click on this button right here. And then I'm actually in logged in as a student on the next page, but you're just going to enter in your uh, username and password and you'll be able to access your Canvas site, which is where all your classes are housed. So I, like I said, I am logged in as a student. So after you gain um, access to your Canvas and you click on courses over here to the left, you'll see a list of all the classes that you are currently enrolled in. And one of those classes will be Soch 1S, Principles of Sociology. And so when you get into our classroom site, you're going to land right here. This is the home page and there is a short welcome message from me. Read over that. And then right below that is some kind of getting started in our class information. So it's important that you read this. I wanted to provide some basic information about what the class entails every single week. So Things might get modified a little bit here and there. Sometimes there'll be um, uh, online activity. Sometimes there won't, but there's a basic structure that um, I follow every single week. And so for an example, every Friday at eight o'clock, I'm gonna open up a new module. And then you have from Friday at 8 a.m. all the way till the following Thursday, um, at 11.59 p.m. to complete the module. So you have one full week. Um, of course, I recommend that you get started on it the weekend um, before it's due. Do your absolute best not to wait until Thursday because it is something that you're going to want to break up over a couple of sessions. Each of the weekly modules contains some basic information. There's an overview, like a little description, and I'm going to show you in a minute um, what this week's module looks like. Um, there's also a checklist, I'll show you that. Uh, most of the time I will provide a PowerPoint, just like a little PowerPoint overview. If there are videos or films or anything that you're gonna watch, all the links and everything that you need are gonna be right there in the module. Um, think of the module as a one-stop shop for everything that you're gonna need um, to complete all of the work, whether it's readings, watching videos, taking your quiz, um, reading the text, because our text is actually going to be embedded right inside of our Canvas class. So it's a one-stop shop for everything that you need to do for the week. And then I provided a little diagram here just so you could get a visual representation of what to expect over the course of the semester. <clears throat> so each of the weekly modules, like I said, there's a reading. Um, sometimes there might be an article or something. Uh, there's some short videos to watch, a Flipgrid post, and I'll go into more detail 
about what Flipgrid is, um, probably in week two, that's when we're going to start those. It used to be that students would write a one to two page paper um, summarizing some of the main content and then reflecting and making connections between a couple of things that they had learned from um, the weekly module to their own lived experience as well as to their service learning experience. And instead of doing a written component this semester, I'm trying out Flipgrid. So we're going to do those in audio video format. And then there's a, a quiz every week. And then sometimes, like I said, there's a, a web activity. This class does have a service learning component. And I go into a lot of detail in the syllabus and also in week three on exactly what service learning is and how to get set up with an organization and everything that is required and also the value of um, having service learning as a part of our class. So there's a couple of forms that you'd fill out, um, 20 hours, and I know 20 hours probably sounds like a whole heck of a lot, but we have 16 weeks together. So I really, if you think about 20 hours over 16 weeks, you're really talking about one or two weeks over the course of the whole, I mean, excuse me, one or two hours each week over the course of the whole semester, or we're talking a couple of weekends, two or three weekends, uh, where you're just doing like a full day on a Saturday, depending on your service learning location, and also depending on your schedule. Now, this is an online class, so if you absolutely uh, need to do your service learning online or remotely, then just hit me up by email and I'm going to work with every student. Uh, oftentimes I have students that are either serving in the military and so they are taking this class very far away. Um, and also their schedules and um, do not allow them to be able to engage in a service learning or I have um, pregnant mothers who are going to be delivering very soon. Um, I have students who are international students and are taking the class um, in a different country. And even for those students, I've been able to work with them and they've been able to find um, really cool service learning um, opportunities wherever they are located. So don't stress over the service learning and please do not drop this class because you are just finding out that there is a service learning component. Service learning is awesome, and I guarantee you by the end of the semester, you are going to be so thankful that you stuck it out and you stayed in this class and you were able to engage with some really awesome folks in the community who are doing the work that we're going to be learning about in our class this semester. And then at the end of the semester, there's a service learning essay. So uh, the university requires one five page um, essay to be written um, as part of the GE undergraduate requirement. And so for this class, you are going to um, combine uh, your experience in your service learning with your learning in um, our text and videos and like the academic learning with the community based learning. And it's very structured. Uh, five pages might sound like a lot right now, but trust me, by the end of the semester, you're going to have so much to put in that paper that I always have students that email me, hit me up asking, can they write their paper six or seven pages? So five pages, definitely, it's very highly structured. Don't stress over it. Um, the other component is exams. There are three exams uh, in this class. They are not cumulative. So uh, the first exam is chapters one, two, and three. Second exam is four, five, and six. And then the third exam is seven, eight, nine, and a part of 10. There is no final exam. There is a final activity. Um, so that is like the basic format of this class. There's a weekly module that's got certain components. There's a service learning component, and there are a few exams. And then also on the home page, if you go to the very bottom, there's just a little note about module number one. So module number one is open on Canvas, and I'm going to um, show you where you can find that 
And actually one of the things in the module is to read over all of the information on this home page. So you can see um, it's, you know, it's fairly, it, there are several components every week, but they're very straightforward um, and kind of right to the point. The first module is due next Thursday, August 29th, um, before midnight. So make sure that you get it done by 11.59 p.m., before midnight. So the other thing that um, you're gonna wanna do is to click on the syllabus tab. And this, um, well, actually, let me pull up the actual syllabus. So this is a hard copy of the syllabus, and I did provide this, um, a link to this on our Canvas site. But I basically took our hard copy syllabus, and it's got all the different components here, like the course description and the objectives and the student learning outcomes. And I built it into our Canvas site. So you can definitely read the hard copy of the syllabus. I actually encourage you to read the information on our Canvas because I was able to put in some additional hyperlinks um, and resources and stuff in the Canvas version. But both are available to you and it's really, really important that you read over, take your time because there's quite a bit of information in there. Um, but read over the syllabus. Um, don't try to take all of it in in one sitting because you might get a little overwhelmed. And um, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. This, the syllabus is literally the whole roadmap for the entire semester. So take your time and read it over right now and then refer back to it throughout the course of the semester. So I'm not gonna go over everything in detail here. Let me just kind of um, touch on a couple of things. So one, the textbook. Our class is part of this program called Immediate Access. And the reason why I opted into the Immediate Access program is because by opting into this, uh, the bookstore was able to get the book for you all at a discount. So I know textbooks are hell of expensive, and so any way that I can try to find uh, um, to reduce those costs, I want to try to do that for you all. So immediate access means that everybody already has opted in automatically when you registered for this class, you opted in to the immediate access, meaning that the book was already purchased for you and it was charged to your Fresno State, your My Fresno State account. Um, and so you want to, instead of buying the book separate, the book has been purchased, and so you just want to pay the university through your My Fresno State account um, to reimburse the university basically for your book. Um, the, there is an option if you want to opt out. Maybe your funds are a little tight right now, and there's no way that you can pay for the book before September 4th. If that's the case, then you might need to opt out and then um, purchase your book separately. And so I provided some information here. There's two ISBN numbers. It's really, really important if you decide to purchase the book um, or if you need to purchase the book um, it, separately that you make sure and you get the Revell access code. So the, um, the book has like videos, we'll take our quizzes, it'll be embedded in our canvas. So you have to have the access code uh, in order to um, when you purchase your book. So James Henslin, this is uh, what the cover looks like. His book, I love it. It's awesome. I've been teaching with it for um, since basically I started teaching sociology uh, about nine years ago. And what I like about James Henslin's book and the feedback that I continue to get from my students every semester is um, that it's very accessible. It's a really engaging book. Uh, James Henslin actually has these really cool like case studies or vignettes that he opens every chapter with. And the vignettes are based off of his actual um, experiences traveling or encountering different cultures and different subcultures and different groups of people uh, that he and his students have engaged in over the course of the years. And so um, his book is called 
essentials of sociology, a down to earth approach. And in my opinion, it really is a down to earth approach. It's very accessible. And so I hope you find the book really interesting and really engaging. Um, and I do. And so I hope that you all do too. So internet um, connection is a must, obviously, um, but this will want to draw your attention to. If throughout the course of the semester you have any technical issues at all, there are plenty of folks that you can reach out to um, to get some help with whatever the technical issue is. So there's the web, phone number, and email to the Technology um, Help Center at Fresno State. Or if you specifically want more help and information about Canvas, there is a Canvas student guide, there's a Canvas student orientation. Um, and so I highly suggest, I really, really encourage you that, you know, right now in the beginning of the semester when things are kind of a little bit slower and there's not a whole lot of assignments due, take a look at some of the Canvas stuff and just so that you have it as a resource if you run into any issues throughout the semester. So this class is almost entirely online. The only aspect of this class that is not online and taught through Canvas and Revell is the service learning component. And so I'm going to um, hold off and I'll talk a little bit more about service learning in just a second. Uh, let me scroll down here under the course requirements. Take a look at this. This is usually the stuff that students are most interested in. Um, basically a little description of what are the different assignments, the graded assignments that you're going to do over the course of the semester. So take a look at each one of those. Um, and then if you um, need any like, clarification on anything as the semester goes on, then definitely always feel like you can hit me up either through um, our discussion board or through email. And then here's service learning. So there's a, a description about what service learning is. So please read over this. And then there's a video that a few years ago, my students that were um, a, all doing service learning and they at that time had worked in groups. Um, one of the groups decided that for their culminating or final project that they wanted to create um, a little video explaining what service learning is and why it is important um, and well, more than important, why they felt it was a really essential part of their learning at Fresno State. And so they wanted to share about their experience um, uh, with other students. So take a look at that video. It's only about nine minutes and uh, hopefully I'll get you kind of excited and give you a little bit more information about what service learning is. The um, Jan and Bud Richter Center for Community Engagement is another resource if you want to learn more about service learning. I recommend that you just click on this link right here and it'll redirect you over to their site and you can learn more about service learning there. And then um, the image that I opened with, the picture of me, um, came from my ePortfolio. So if you want to learn more about the different projects that students and I and community partners have engaged in over the course of many years, um, click on that and you can learn more about the work that we've done and more importantly, the impact that the work that we have done has had in creating changes in our community. And so then here's the grading scale. Um, take a look at that. And so that way you know, just add up your points um, throughout the course of the semester and actually Canvas does it automatically for you. And so that way you know where you kind of stand as we go along. This is an image, just a little snapshot of the course calendar. But if you click right here, this is how you can download a hard copy of our syllabus. And then let me say um, just a couple of things about how to communicate with me. Um, Monday through Friday, so pretty much you can email me obviously anytime. Um, I'm you, I will typically respond to uh, email inquiries uh, within 24 hours so long as it's Monday through Thursday. Um, if you hit me up on Friday, there's a possibility I will respond to your email. Um, but for sure, um, I will respond to it by Monday if I don't get to it on Friday or over the weekend. 
Um, and then this is really important. So I really, really need you all, and you can't see, but I have my hands like as if I'm begging. Um, I really need you to use this format when you email me. So I have about 150 students that I um, work alongside every semester. And so it's really helpful for me if when you email me that in the subject line, you use like two or three words to describe what's the purpose of the email, the message that you're sending me. And then you also include the, um, the course number. So like for an example, if somebody was emailing me about the textbook and they needed textbook help, then in the subject line, just put textbook help. And then for this class, it would be SOCH 1S. Uh, we are section 047078. And so just put that, do me a favor and help me out and make sure that you put something like that in the subject line. And then right here are tons of resources. So I really hope that you're not already feeling overwhelmed. Um, but if you are, this is the beginning of the semester, day one. So totally understandable, especially if you are uh, first time, first semester, incoming freshman. Um, just trying to figure out how to navigate Fresno State and all of your classes, it can be, be very um, easy to become overwhelmed. And so if you find that you are getting overwhelmed, please email me. Uh, I also provided my phone number. That's my Google voice phone number. So you can, you know, call me and just let's talk about it. Let me help you and support you in just trying to navigate everything this first semester, or if you're feeling overwhelmed in this class, um, please reach out to me. I really, really mean that. And then I provided some other like online resources. If there's anything you're trying to figure out, I am telling you, YouTube probably has it. Um, academic stuff, Khan Academy is a great resource. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of campus support. So, you know, look over these and, um, if you don't find under this section right here something that provides some support for whatever you're going through, then hit me up and I'm going to help you try to figure out how to connect you with a resource. So, okay, probably talked way too much about the syllabus, um, but take your time, read over the syllabus. It's really important. And the last thing that I want to draw your attention to is the modules. So, as I said, every week, uh, you're basically going to get a new module. It's going to open up on Friday and you have one full week to complete it. So every module contains the module overview. So there's a little description about what the module is all was kind of about. And then here's the checklist. So there's a checklist, literally a bullet point checklist of the different things that you need to do to complete. Um, the checklist. So the watch the video, the getting started video. Well, last semester it was 15 minutes and I'm already at 23. So this one's going to be a little longer, but you're already watching it. So you've essentially done the very first thing. Um, read the syllabus. We kind of went through some of that, but take your time and read over that. And there's just some short videos in here, a little crash course on what sociology is. Um, and literally just read the overview and then you're just going to go right here and after you read each one of the pages, you just click next and then this would be the video that you're actually watching right now and you might have accessed it through your email because I'm going to email this to you. Um, watch the video and then here's a little short video, three minutes on some tips on how to be successful in any online class. And then go next. Here's the crash course on what is sociology. I like crash course. Uh, they're pretty engaging. They are, they do talk fast in the videos, but refer back to these. Maybe um, uh, subscribe to crash course on YouTube and refer back to some of this stuff. I, I think their stuff is pretty interesting and pretty engaging. So um, here's one of theirs and I encourage you to use crash course as a resource in this class. And then there's a little excerpt, pretty short reading, uh, excerpt from Invitation to Sociology by Peter Berger. Read over that, please. A little bit of um, excerpt from C. Wright Mill's Sociological Imagination. And then there's a 
short activity on meeting your peers, kind of a community building, getting to know one another. Um, I already did my Google slide and I've already updated my profile with my picture and a little bio and some contact info. And so that's basically what this activity is about. And then the last thing is a um, getting started quiz. So the quiz is basically 10 questions, a half a point each. It's not timed and it's basically information from the syllabus, the home page, this video, and module one. So um, after you've done everything, this is just to kind of test your knowledge. And since it, there's no time limit on it, if you come across a question and you don't know um, the answer, the reason it doesn't have a time limit is because I want you to go into um, back into the syllabus or wherever to find out the answer. And then that's it. That would be the end of uh, module number one. And so uh, that's pretty much everything. I guess one last thing I should talk about is the discussion board. And so I really, really want to encourage you all to help me help you. And so that's what one of our discussion boards is. And I'm offering extra credit. So if you just click on discussion board and then go here, um, offering one point of extra credit to the first student who responds thoughtfully and accurately to another student's question on the discussion board. And so the reason for this is I don't want you all to wait for me to respond. Help each other out. So first, look at Canvas and see if you can find the answer there. Look into the syllabus and see if you can find the answer there. And if the answer to your question is not in the syllabus or on Canvas, then post um, um, a discuss post your question here, and then anybody can respond to it. And I really want to encourage you all to help each other out. Like I said, there in this particular class, there's 45 of you and one of me, and then I've got three other sections of Soch 3S. So I've got quite a bit of students. And trust me, I mean, I do want to support you in all the best ways that I can. And one of those ways I think is creating opportunities for you all to connect and support one another. So that's what this discussion board is all about. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information. I can't believe I've talked for almost 30 minutes. Um, I hope I didn't bore you to death. I uh, hope I didn't overwhelm you or scare you away. It's a lot of information here in the beginning because it's the whole overview of Soch 1S. Um, but after we get through this first hurdle of kind of getting ourselves set up for the semester, then we're going to ease in and start um, just really digging into sociology and what that means and all these really cool concepts and theories. And you're going to be making all these connections between what you're reading in Henslin's book and the videos you're watching to your own lived experience. I can't tell you how many times when I was a student that I would just have all of these aha moments where I was like, wow, I knew this, but now I have these like concepts and theories to um, this language really to um, describe some of the things that I have been observing and experiencing throughout my whole life. And so I love sociology, I love teaching, I love my students, and I am really um, excited and looking forward to all of us having a wonderful semester together.